Hi, glad you could join me again today. I'm in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 17 today. This is the story of a king, a good king for the most part, by the name of Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat, when he became a king of Judah, he established a policy where he would send officials from his kingdom out into the, into the hillside, countryside of Judah and teach the people in those places the word of God. That's what chapter 17 is all about, starting about verse 8 or so. Actually, verse 7 or so. And so this happened starting in the third year in which Jehoshaphat was reigning. And he had a heart for God, and so he sent these men out to teach the word of God to all of the people of that particular land. Now, what's really fascinating here is that the scripture never indicates that any other king did something like that. This was something that Jehoshaphat himself had had conceived of, and he saw the importance of it, and so he went and did that as a part of his administration. Now, in this particular passage, or just as soon as this is over, in verse 10 of this passage, it says this, and this is really significant. He says, And the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms of the land that were around Judah, and they made no war against Jehoshaphat. Now think about that for a moment. We have great military defenses in America today. We nations are required to uh, to basically protect their people and their land, and, and that's part and parcel of what it means to be a leader in government. You're to protect the people that are within the borders of your country. We could get into a debate about that in this day, but that's not the purpose here. But what we do notice here is that it appears that in this particular passage there is a connection between Jehoshaphat's teaching the people the word of God and the fear that came upon all of the nations around who would never make war against him. Now, in our day, uh, we live in a country that for many, many years had believed in the scripture as being true. We believed that it was important that children in Sunday school learn the Bible. Bible lessons were taught not only in Sunday school, but actually for a time they were taught in the public schools as well, and no one had any trouble with that. And for many, many years, we had no enemies around us. Canada, Mexico, they were not enemies, they were fraternal. We had the oceans that protected us from other potential enemies. But it's interesting that since 1960s, uh, 62, 63, whatever it was, when, when the Supreme Court ruled that it's un unconstitutional for public schools to pray, and we started to see the withdrawal of biblical truth from our public square, then our, the number of enemies about, uh, around our country have increased again and again and again. By the time 9-11 happened, that was the first domestic attack on our nation. I believe that it had something to do with the fact that we had turned our backs upon the Word of God and we had decided that we were going to let our military protect us. Well, as great as our military is, there are some things it can't protect us from. Now, I believe that we as a nation need to, return, need to return to that policy. I probably will not see that in my lifetime. The forces of secularism are so ingrained in our world. But the bottom line here is that the more we focus upon the Scripture, the more we adhere to the, the, the infallible and inerrant truth of Scripture, the more protection we're going to have. Now, I believe that for as a nation, but I also believe that for us as individuals. As we keep our eyes focused upon God's Word, He will protect us and He will provide for us. Does that mean that we won't be persecuted? No, not at all. 
Does that mean that, uh, that we will not be targeted by the forces of evil? No, in some cases it will make us a target. But in the midst of it, we will see his provision and his protection for us. And we can count on that. And we can trust that. That's what Jeho Jehoshaphat did. That's what he saw. And so it is with us also. Keep your nose in the scripture. That's the place where we find truth. And that's what's going to change the world in which we live. Father, we bow before you. And we thank you for this example from the life of Jehoshaphat. We recognize that he, for the most part, was faithful, but he wasn't perfect. And yet, we see ourselves, and we see that we want to be faithful, but we're not perfect ourselves. And so, Father, we ask you, just like you did for Jehoshaphat, protect him and keep him, uh, and do the same for us. And grant that we will walk faithfully with you and know the provision and the grace that you can offer us. So we honor you and we bless you and we pray for this nation that through it you will be honored as well. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.